So I start with some notation. And uh, so I need to fix a totally real field, F, well, maybe small, uh, right larger. F, so this is a totally real field, finite degree. And over that, I fix a quadratic extension M, that is a CM extension, CM quadratic. So it's um, totally imaginary quadratic extension over F, and that gives rise to CM part. And uh, we have an integer ring here, R. And inside F, we have an integer ring O. So that's the, I use the notation for the entire lecture. All right, to have a CM, a medium variety, I need to fix a CM type. So the CM type, I would write the sigma. So this means what CM type, right? So this is just a sigma and this joint union you apply, our sigma is a set of embeddings of M into algebraic closure of Q bar and uh, algebraic closure of Q. So I have algebraic closure of Q So it's, it contains complex numbers and I identify it uh, periodic sort of complex number, periodic completion of algebraic closure of QP that I will write CP and I identify two. So I fix a prime, P a prime bigger than two and ramified in F over Q. Uh, so this is fixed. Um, ramification condition is actually not necessary, but I'm, yeah, let, let, so uh, this sigma, then I compose the complex conjugation and take a union. And um, the complex conjugation sometimes acts on this C, but I also think this as a generator of the Galois group of M over F. Okay. And uh, so this is the entire embedding, but this is a disjoint union for isom, field isom of M into, at the beginning it's a C, but if you change it into CP, then you have a periodic places. But it could overlap, but I don't allow that. So the sigma P, the periodic places, of these two things induced is also disjoint union, okay? disjoint. This is the uh, ordinality condition, the abelian variety of CM type sigma having ordinary reduction modulo P, good reduction. Uh, and uh, at any places of this periodic places of F, that's the, um, condition, I, I need the ordinality. And um, um, so whatever you pick a latest, all latest, then you have a order A, that is something alpha in M, that preserves the ratings. This is the one thing you get out of all ratings, and you get a CM abelian variety defined over um, discrete variation ring, periodic discrete variation ring. Uh, that I write XA, it is defined over discrete variation ring, but if you plug in the complex number, then you it is isomorphic to complex torus. C, complex numbers, and but you prepare the sigma copies, product of sigma copies of C, and it is modeled out by the uh, A sigma. A sigma is just um, sigma running through sigma. And uh, of course, A is in 
A. All right? So this is the CMR medium variety, and this basically impl implies H1 of this XA complex point of integer coefficients is isomorphic to the O module as A, uh, R module, R A module, I should say. Okay, this order is uh, of course in, inside the integer ring R and it has a conductor. So it has O plus some conductor F and R time conductor. So I saw this definition, I mean, you saw this definition already, and I rather like to specialize everything to um, some prime powers. Okay, so this conductor will be, the conductor will be some power of prime ideal L to the N. L is a prime ideal O prime, And um, it divides rational prime L. And this L is supposed to be different from P. Okay. And so our order R, I call it Rn, that is O plus L to the N R. So the, um, here after A is all the time R N proper idea. A, if I sometimes write A N to indicate dependence on N, and that is R N proper or projective idea, fractional idea. Okay, so, you perhaps saw uh, this kind of things, uh, kind of very uh, standard. So, um, all right. So uh, I like to introduce the ring class group. That is, so the, it's a class group of our projective fractional idea modular multiplication by element of M, uh, but uh, I just write it as a, so if I write CNN plus group of uh, level N, that's just a pick star group of therefore RN. And uh, of course RN is O algebra, and therefore there's a natural map from pick O, this is a class group of F and into, Pick of R n, right? Then I just can take a co-kernel, and that I denote it C L n minus. This is anti-cyclotomic ring class group. When you are dealing with imaginary quadratic field, this is a trivial. These two are the same. You make a ring class group then you get automatically the anti-cyclotomic things, complex conjugation acting by minus, minus. But uh, in general, CM case, you need to take this kind of way. Uh, so the, in the imaginary quadratic case, this is a famous uh, cross group Kronecker study. All right, then, um, sure, I, I'm, trying to preserve this for the for my main point. I like this long blackboard because I can keep a lot of open space up and down things. Uh, at Tata Institute blackboard is infinite long. Well, anyway, I take then the projective limit CRN and infinity, and it could be something minus or nothing, and that is just a limit. Question mark. 
uh, how you take a limit? You just take a fractional ideal A. This is our fractional ideal, maximal order. And you take a profinite completion of half. Okay, so that um, you run all the integer positive r over n r and actually so you have this a and you take also a hat same way and remove l component and then you multiply this r n l added completion this is a completion of an ideal a n so it's something, this projective limit is just a, a n plus of a n is sent to cross of a n m. And for any bigger than m. In this way, fractional, uh, I, I assume actually, because I do this. So this is independent of the choice of the primary component at L. Therefore, I could suppose that this is just a prime to L. Okay. It's just a convenience. And uh, in this way, you get important, um, important subgroup called algebraic subgroup. This is just a collection of all class of A, fractional coming fractional ideals of. This is a continuous cardinality. This has a continuous cardinality, but this guy is a countable thing. It's a subgroup. And uh, A, our fractional ideal prime to L, but I don't need to say prime to L because I just killed it L part. And um, um, important point, oh, this is infinity, I'm sorry. Okay, important point is that this, this guy is a product of gamma times delta minus. And similarly, of course, CL infinity, itself is the same gamma times delta. This is a finite group. And this is isomorphic to the erratic integer ring to the sum power, right? What I wanted to say, it's the same way you decompose, this decomposition is transcendental. In the sense that you have an algebraic object here. This won't be split into two pieces like that. Or if you, you can also say that this algebraic part, you intersect it with delta say minus, then this is just an ambiguous classes. So it's a two torsion, finitely many. So for simplicity, uh, if I allow ambiguous class, things are a little bit more complicated. So I just for simplicity, assume this is trivial. Well, that's basically I'm saying that the discriminant is um, prime or trivial. Why this is algebraic? This is algebraic subgroup coming from fractional ideal. That this projective limit, you can take for each piece of n, you have a image of fractional ideals a total, but it's not a uniform limit like this. So this is algebraic element. 
So for example, the Linux class group is a little strange of you do this kind of things, but use your Ray class group, you take a limit to the end. Of course, fractional idea group is in it, and that's the algebraic subgroup. And it's the same thing. That's okay. Yeah, so this is a transcendental object. This is a countable object. Okay, so that means, that means this transcendency means that you project CR, you can find a, for example, if you take a representative set of delta minus in the ideal so that it covers one by one onto this delta minus. But if, so you have a set Q finite set that is made of fractional ideals, Q, basic Q, and then you project down it to um, gamma. I just bring this to, I call it Q sub gamma. And you can choose Q so that this will never be in algebraic group. Only element that this won't happen is a trivial element only by our, our assumption here. For example, the choice of Q is something like which projecting down to Q minus uh, delta minus in the usual delta projection, uh, that's you, except for one thing, except for identity element, something like that. Well, in other words, I could say that Q is embedded in CL minus infinity modulo uh, CL algebraic just by sending Q to its gamma projection. And that kind of Q, I fix it, all right. So what I'm going to do is that we go far end. Uh, I looked at similar variety that is prime to P level. And um, you should be careful that this is a pro-variety, non-necessary, okay? And uh, this guy classifies Hilbert Blumenthal a William variety. I don't like this name. Blumenthal made a lot of errors in his paper. And um, for example, he believed the Hilbert modular variety level one has only one cusp. And up to zero time, Everybody believed it. Try prove that there's a cross number cusps. Okay, so sometimes I call it Hilbert modular abelian variety. Oh, Hilbert is the guy suggested to study this to Blumenthal. Okay, anyway, this is abelian variety. And whose endomorphism algebra? So it is say defined over some ring A. And then the morphism algebra contains over a, a national endomorphism contains O and its dimension is the rank Z rank of O, but you can say that the degree of F. Okay. And uh, there's a level structure and the polarization, and that's the point. Each point has this guy above uniquely, okay? Up to similar variety type isomorphisms. Okay. Um, so I, will, I need to specify level structure and polarization, but this similar variety 
therefore has the point x a coming from the CM abelian variety of A, it may be coming from Rn level n order and corresponding object that I will define perhaps second today, perhaps I don't know if I have a time sufficient time. Um, there's two clocks. One should be there for me. Um, so what I like to do, uh, the fundamental question is, I actually prepare Q copies of similar variety, S8Q. It's just a product of S8 indexed by the element of Q I have chosen. And um, for each, I have a point, but I hear, so this is, I embed A to X A plus of A, that is, it is level N plus, and multiply this Q gamma. At level N, this is algebra coming from uh, the fractional idea. So you can make a product. Huh? And you run over Q that is in SHQ. This is a transcendental action. So one would expect that if you have a, some infinite set inside the disjoint union of the CL minus N, or CL N, okay? Um, then you regard it in that embedding. And this point in the product, I just call it S of A, okay? So you embed it by S into SHQ. And um, if this is infinite, one might expect that it's Zariski closure is total, Zariski depth. In other words, if you have a Q tuple of modular form sitting on here, if it vanishes on Xi, modular form Q tuple itself entirely vanishes. That's a little too optimistic observation or question. But anyway, we try to read this kind of thing when S Xi, or I just identify by S, the risky dense. This is the first question I like to ask. Wait, wait, you know, you know too much. Forget about your knowledge. Okay. So as he said that this is too optimistic, not true. Um, so you choose an irreducible component, geometric irreducible component of SH and you replace this SHQ to V to the Q. They're not true. Sometimes you can choose Xi whose intersection with this guy is empty. Interesting. It's a nice exercise to find that example. All right. So I somehow, so this notation you have probably 
he kept already in your mind very well, so I place it. Um, so I read uh, one theorem, I call it black box theorem. That means I don't prove it. It's it, 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 it my paper in another month. One seventy two, uh, two thousand ten. Um, it's almost hundred page long paper, and uh, out, out of this hundred pages, sixty pages the proof of this about this stuff. And so I I I, I need to probably give ten lectures to prove it. Uh, so I don't do that. So notation like this: B is an irreducible component. If An irreducible component X of Zariski closure of Xi inside the V to the Q. So this is inside the V to the Q. I forgot one thing to say. Um, this similar variety has an action that I will explain. Important point of similar variety is an action of a dare action, FA, that you remove P and the infinity acts on SA. It's a very rare example to have algebraic variety. Even the pro variety has such a big group of automorphism. This is the one of the most important discovery of Shimura. And um, so you have a one point, XR, central point origin, maximal order. The stabilizer is M cross. You choose a nice level structure. That's the basis basically of R. And uh, then you have a regular representation bringing M into GL2. And this is the stabilizer. Of XR. Okay. So, Yeah, actually, I suppose Psi is stable under radically open subgroup of M cross. In other words, you have a subgroup in M cross, it will make a periodic completion, you get a um, open subgroup of M periodic completed thing. So you suppose this condition. So this irreducible compound that has dimension positive and this psi intersected X is non empty. Then X, you pick some open subgroup, A, compact open, and I make a quotient by K. So this is a Nesselian thing. It's a Zarisic closure of projection of psi into xk, ah, v, vk to the q. And it's equal to the 
that is hidden. Whatever k, k is arbitrary. So I could say that, but I will prove this only under the condition that determinant of k is O hat uh, P removed cross easiest. So that's why I brought in K. Uh, this condition is not necessary. So I could say X is equal V to the Q as a theorem, but you feel a little strange. You take a Dalski closure of an infinite set and you pick a irreducible component, then you feel that it will contain element of psi, right? Not true. That's, I didn't know that actually. Three years ago, uh, actually Ben Katesh, reading my paper of mod P non-triviality of AKL values, he told me that why this intersection on empty? Oh, it is three years ago. I wrote a paper 2004. And um, so 14 or 15 years later, everybody believed my paper. I didn't prove in that paper. I proved everything except for this stuff. And um, so I need to prove it <laughs> somehow under some condition, right? That's what I'm giving lecture here. Oh, Akshay is Indian, though he's Australian. But uh, so it's good, nice to give this lecture in India. I told Akshay this fact. He said it's wonderful. <laughs> so uh, let's do that. So here's a pathological example of action, an example. You forget about all Kimura variety thing. It's just a pro curve. And uh, things, uh, so I have B, that is B infinity, that is the projective limit of pro etal curve, uh, Vn. And uh, uh, to make things absolutely simple, everything is over C. You can do it over a finite field. Uh, or, uh, so, Maybe I write somewhere here. If I write big F, this is FP bar. Okay. And all the discrete variation residual characteristic P showing up is residue field as very close. Anyway, you can do it over F also, that's bold face F. And uh, uh, here's a, a definition V node. Is just a spectrum CX, so a fine line. Or if you want, you can plug in E1 if you like projective case, but I'll explain it a fine case. And uh, this is a fine line over C. So it contains point J or any integer Z, or in other words, as a prime ideal X minus J, right? So I define Psi to be, so I, I, I didn't, Vn is V node disjoint union the node and indexed by z over two to the n z. And this is the node therefore times this finite ring. The projective limit you take with respect to here, right? Then you, at the limit you get to z2, the two dyadic completion. And uh, this psi is, J two to the J after so V infinity is V naught times Z two. The point here, you have J here, you have two power there and J is one, two infinity, 
all positive integer, I should say. Then this projects down to psi n. That is, of course, j 2 to the j modulo 2 to the n, right? And it's the same. And this is isomorphism because j side separate everything. This is a projection is isomorphism. Very nice situation. Then the, I take the closure of n inside this Vn. You see, most point, rise in the node times zero, right? Because if J is bigger than N, it's just zero. And for small N up to N minus one, it's outside of V zero, single point. So this is just a V zero times zero, this joint union, uh, J two to the J mod to n J running from one to up to n minus one. Okay. So this is dimension one irreducible component. This is a finite remaining dimension. Zero reducible component. So the psi bar is the limit of it. And that's um, V naught times zero, one component, and this joint union of psi. Dimension zero guy here, dimension one guy here, because it's infinite set in the curve, the quasi closure has dimension one. But Huge amount of dimensional zero component. It's psi, so no point in psi. Okay. An exercise is that replace two to the j to the say, for example, three to the j. Then all do the same. All the risky closure has a irreducible component that's dimension one. And of course, you can have positive dimension component containing psi and the positive dimension component containing not no element in psi, both appear. But key point is this is no unit. Okay, so this is the funny example of uh, Akshay. And um, So I now have some real work uh, to state some of the uh, theorems I try to prove. In this lecture series. And um, So let me say similar variety, explain similar variety slightly more. Okay, I have a point of that. So this is, I suppose, discrete. So DBR residue field is F, okay? and it is defined. So the, this W you take it inside CP, and uh, you take closure, periodic closure. That I call it W inside CP, uh, Roman W. Anyway, that is the point. W point is just a X and a polarization lambda. Uh, I, I start with W, that's a level structure. And polarization W. Okay. Anyway, X complex point is something the same way C sigma modulo some radius. This is radius may not be inside M. And the polarization is basically L 
oh, Riemann form pairing you just give, give you. Then it gives rise to the wedge product of L over O. Then you get a fractional ideal of F. And that is some fractional ideal plus because it has all multiplications. If you multiply by O, then something positive, polarization and positivity, some po totally positive element will be multiplied. So this guy is uniquely defined CLF plus strict class group. And um, so basically polarization is something, you know, you, you give yourself the strict element in strict class group of F. I don't care much about polarization. This is the only thing I explain. And W is that you take a Tate module of X Uh, then you tensor over O hat. This is O hat module because it has O multiplication. And you remove the component. And of course, infinity component. And that W here is a, this W is a column vector. In this, in this tensor product, and that is a basis that just identify eight module with column vector space of a there. This is a level structure. I use this guy, uh, column vector. So in this vector, GL2 of S A the infinity acts, right? Just by multiplication, matrix multiplication. In this way, Shimura variety has that big automorphism group. Okay, um, so under the condition that the determinant of K is under this condition, the, the irreducible, so the similar variety module such K is a union, I mean this joint union of V C irreducible component P running CLF plus polarization C point gathered is gives a geometrically reducible component. So that's only finite remain. When F is Q, it's just a one for modular curve under that condition on determinant is just a one irreducible component. So that tells you that XA the polarization ideal is basically A wedge A. This may not exhaust all CLF plus. For example, you know, if M is a ramified amplifier inside the Hilbert plus field, then only half of them show up. Therefore, Intersection of C, so intersection of intersection of this C that is isomorphic to this joint union of C R and minus inside S H Q. The C intersection with Q, if this V corresponding with something not coming from uh, this process. The A, the idea could be empty. Empty. 
Not many people knows that. You know that? And the wise once come up this, and he asked me, I believe that this could happen. Do you believe it? I said, of course. And he is totally assured and used many times. Okay, that's an exercise. And um, so I, I, I need to suppose that this is no empty, first of all. Suppose this is no empty, otherwise I have nothing I could do. And uh, uh, and this is an arithmetic. Uh, so, okay. Then I consider some set. Ah, one thing I forgot. So uh, if I choose a hat, uh, level L remove basis, oh, level P remove basis of P a hat, a n hat plus uh, plus times one plus O hat P times W two. So the level structure of X R is just a uh, this one W two. Okay, and if you, for example, multiply diagonal matrix, take a prime element to some uh, and raise the some power n. This, you let it act in XR, I have already chosen. If I choose, if you multiply this, you get a prime element, uh, the basis. So one zero zero pi L to the N of one W two, this is a level structure of X, uh, L, right? I choose this way, the level structure at L. So it will be X R N. So by this action by alpha, alpha L brings the A N somehow to A N plus one, one not move. This perhaps I will use next lecture. Of course, I will recall this fact, but this is a nice place. Closure of C, this is embedded by that embedding S. C is just a decision for each. A here, I defined as A inside. So I consider this as a subset of infinite many points. So basically, if you take closure of this guy inside this drastic closure, and uh, uh, if M is unnamified everywhere, you get half of the reducible component after I prove my theorems. But if M ramified over F, then it's total. But I, I want to have some very thin set inside. And um, I want to know when that is really that is dense in the closure of this C. All right. So, My goal, we still have time. Oh, I have a 10 minutes. Oh, great. Um, well, I started maybe later, maybe a little more than 10 minutes. Not sure. Next lecture, when next lecture starts? Ah, then, then it, it will be okay. You will lose some of the uh, rest, but that's not my responsibility. The director did a little bit more. Okay, so um, 
I need to introduce a measure that is really I study. So I have a modular form. One thing I need to say is that modular form is not a function, not a function of similar variety, but it's a section of line bundle. It classified X, W, I forgot about polarization, and omega. Omega is a differentials that span X, if this X is defined over A, the differential omega uh, first differential xa and that is of course module of a tensor o a tensor z o and by comparing the lang you have a unique generator like elliptic curve case and uh, this will come out so if you multiply this omega by some unit here some constant will show up. Okay, so you can't just plug in F, but choose a Hecke character. Lambda of M, such that everybody coming out is actually dependent on this lambda, but uh, such that lambda, a, a inverse times F X A. I choose one for each canonical choice of omega and uh, you multiply it, then this is independent, depends only, only on the class of A at the level N or any N. Uh, you can choose that kind of things all the time. The central character of lambda, central character of F has to be equal to lambda restricted to F. But that you can basically do. Then this, this value, I call it, this will be later explained, right? Because it's dependent on the this and this, any function on CRN is a sum up. This is the definition of the measure for each finite group. I all the time suppose that F is a Hecke eigenform, and in particular, the Atkins UL operator, you have an eigenvalue F. And if A is non zero, this is F is defined over F. F means characteristic P field. If A is zero, then you can. D phi fn after modification patched together to give d phi f infinity. If zero, you can't patch. So it's just a correction of measure I have. And running through. And uh, theorem, I want to. At the very end, true. Is that I call it non vanishing theorem? And for that, I need some sort of Notation further. That okay. So so if we had eigen form over F.
And um, suppose to the hypothesis that there exists psi in F intersected or elf completed in each class B of O over L to the J for sufficiently large positive integer J such that the Q expansion coefficient at infinity of A psi F is non-zero. In F. This J depends on actually L. Then the set of character I with integration over CLN minus I. So I fix branch character of Psi from delta minus goes to F cross. So I just, chi is therefore, chi runs over all characters of gamma mu L infinity. This is isomorphic to mu L infinity QL bar, for example. So you can probably see it because L is different from P. Okay. Uh, D phi N, Fn, and this N is chosen so that Conductor of chi is L to the N. Okay? Is non zero. Is very skid dense in GM to the D. You remember that gamma is the L to the D. Okay? What Zalitsky dance means, you have this set X. So I just define set X, Zalitsky dance inside the home, gamma mu L infinity, Zalitsky dance means I choose Oh, I choose a basis of gamma mu L infinity. So choose basis a basis gamma one, gamma D of capital gamma, and you embed it in G M D Q L bar. Chi goes to chi gamma one. I gamma D. And this image is the risk dense of a QL bar in D. So under this condition, if you have a heck eigenform whose starting eigenvalue T1 is one, and then by existence of Gerard representation, this often the case for any J. And if J is if D is one, I can specify J very well, but anyway, I perhaps stopped here, the stuff. So I should say that this is the L value sort of. Uh, if F is Eisenstein C, then you get L zero chi inverse lambda kind of things modulo uh, period. And uh, if F is cast for, th th this is uh, sort of my result of dwarf volume 2004, dwarf memorial volume. And uh, later 2007, I extended slightly uh, in uh, the Ram conference proceedings. And, um, if F is a cast form, it's a central critical value 
of L S F say basically tensor chi. Uh, lambda contribution is appears, but I, I don't really lambda anticyclotomic projection times chi. Chi is anticyclotomic. I mean, square of this is something like that. This is a minimum C. Minimum C, uh, documenta mat, I think volume 14 or something, under some more conditions. So I, I don't touch with this kind of L value thing, but in this way, you get the L value non vanishing module of P. And, uh, uh, that is a lot, right? Under this kind of circumstance. Okay, I stop here. Thank you.